Okay guys, lots of people asking for updates on the fish and well, all the other animals really. Especially goats, but goats and fish mostly I guess. Well there's the fish, just changing their water. It's easy to change their water because you just pump it out and fill it back up. No big deal. You see I attempted to clean the bottom but hard to do when they're in there jumping everywhere. So I can get a little closer look at them. There they are. Going crazy. They're doing good, growing, except for a couple. There's a couple of them that are still two inches long. And there's a couple that are getting a, a decent size. But all in all, they're doing good. I don't know how old they are. I'll have to check to see when we got them. A lot of people have asked about what what's going to happen to these. Are they going to be put in the lake? Or where are they going? See that little one right there? It's one little tiny one. These will never go to the lake. These are uh, going to live their life out in this tank. When they come out of here, they'll be going in the freezer or the pot. That's what this experiment's all about. The problem with the lake is, well, not only because people were stealing them, but they kill each other and, and they walk away. And, like, uh, I don't know uh, what happened to all the ones we put in there before. We'll find out. We're going to pump the lake out this year. See what's in there. There are some big fish. We'll see how many. Hopefully some good sized tilapia. There's a few nice ones there. Okay, as this is going, we'll take a walk around and look at all the other stuff. We'll take a look at the garden. We've got a half a dozen carrots here. I've never grown carrots before, but the tops are looking okay. There's not a whole lot happening in the garden right now. This is the planting season, so we've got to get going, but the garden was taken out of commission pretty much last year when I was gone it's become very overgrown this is turmeric the turmeric is uh, all volunteers it'll be ready to harvest in uh, I don't know maybe a month before the end of the year check this thing out this is a pandan plant pandan leaf is used for a lot of uh, in a lot of desserts. If you see anything that's green in Thailand, chances are it's pandan leaf. Although uh, they're using a lot of artificial stuff now. But look at the size of that. This bed is four feet wide. It's way over on both sides. This hallway is three feet, so it goes three, four, seven, and over the other side. Eight, nine feet wide, plus comes out about four feet. That's all one plant. It's huge and we use it all the time. We use it for uh, flavoring water, hot water, put it in the, for tea and coffee and stuff. Adds a nice flavor. You see lots of uh, Thai basil, all mostly volunteers. There's some uh, green onions. These are actually shallots. They use a lot of green onion here, a lot. And I think this is the first year we've actually grown them all through the year. So uh, maybe we're on to something there. It's very expensive in the off season, like now. This is a bed of weeds. I planted out all kinds of different things in here. And the weeds just took over and killed everything except this spinach. This is spinach. That I bought the seeds in Malaysia. I've never seen purple spinach like this before and the, the purple when you cook it the purple comes out you know 
Makes everything purple. But it's doing very well. Starting to go to seed. We've got to get eaten on this. Let me see. Some seed buds right there. In the back is my worm farms. That one over there is empty, the blue one. This bed, I just got it ready now. We're going to plant shallots in here tonight. This entire bed will be all shallots. All green onions, all for green onions. This little right here, I planted that out yesterday. With the few shallots we had. Today we bought more. This is garlic chives. I might do a video on this when they harvest it. It's ready to harvest now. They pickle it. That's how they preserve it. You'd be surprised how much will come out of this one little area. And it's every couple of weeks, two or three weeks, you can harvest this. It grows really quick. A disaster. I'm slowly digging over this bed. But it's a nightmare. This grass right here, its root system goes down six, eight inches. And if you don't get the roots out, it'll be back in no time. And this bed was just infested. Total wasted bed. So I'm slowly digging that over. This is a giant spiky eggplant, volunteer. I like volunteers. This bed. It's the only one with straw. That's the problem with these beds. We didn't mulch them last year. And the grass just took over. But uh, I got this bit of straw here. Mulch this one. Made a world of difference. It's uh keeps the, the weeds down, keeps the water in. It's the way to go. Lemongrass, I pulled this entire thing out yesterday. It needs to be transplanted as it was really overgrown. It was in this bed. This bed here was... I got it ready yesterday, it's pretty much ready to go. The problem with this bed is it's a weird shape and I can't reach this, this far side over here. So I got this bunch of banana trees yesterday and I laid them down and we're just going to cover that up. Put the banana trees down and then put the chicken manure and all the scrapings out of the yard, out of the chicken yard on top of it. And hopefully that will stop the weeds because it's so far over there I can't even pull the weeds out. There's the tools of my trade. <laughs> There's some chilies ready to harvest. These other Thai chili plants, I think they all come back except one, they were in bad shape. This one's got a little tiny leaf on it now. Maybe, it's got a chance. Look at that beauty, huh? Nice. Okay, let's go look at some animals. Here's a look at the jungle. That's a goat. The chicken house is totally encapsulated. <laughs> you can barely see it. Oh, I have too many toms. Look at that beauty. Pomelo. Another one there is smaller. Finally getting pomelo off of this tree. Be nice. Goat food. Believe it or not, we have too much. There's my ATV trailer. I had that thing loaded with compost for about eight months. I finally got it sifted uh, two days ago. So I got my trailer back. Check out over here. I 
Hello, Mama. This is Angry Bird. She's a nasty turkey, but she's a great incubator. You can see that yellow in there. That's a baby duck. She's sitting on a bunch of duck eggs. Two eggs were, two or three eggs were older by about three days, I figured. And they act, act, uh, hatched out yesterday. There's two in there, two babies, so. There he is. Hello, buddy. Huh? Isn't that cute, huh? Mama turkey and her baby duck. She's had still ducks before this one. She's really nice. Nice incubator. Really nasty. She bites. Sitting in the tire. I did a video about six months ago. Baby turkeys. Well, they're not babies anymore. The brown one right here, that's that's the dad. I think he will be replaced. Because I have no idea how old he is. He's at least three years old. Probably four or five. He was full of grown when I got him. We replaced him with this one. It was a lot bigger. <laughs> it only works once? Three toms. That's a big, big mistake. They fight. Actually, their faces are healed up now. I think old Tom kicked the other guy's ass, the two other, two of the young ones. But I used to have five of them in here. <laughs> that was crazy. There's some ducks. There's not all of them. That's where the baby ducks came from. And the eggs that made the baby ducks. For whatever reason, these ducks, everyone talks about how good a mom they are. I've never had them go broody. One. One went broody once. Uh, they just don't go broody. I don't know why. So the turkeys take care of the egg making. There's a turkey egg in there for some reason. That's unusual. Oh, that might duck egg. This is dirty. Okay, chickens. Let's go in here. That's my rooster. The same problem with him. I don't know how old he is, but he's old. Same with the end behind him. The end stopped laying now. They came with this original bunch and they were already adults. Egg laying chickens when I got them. I've had them for three years now, so they're probably about four years old. This group over here are half the rooster and half that Thai chicken. That's the mom and dad right there, actually. So I got half breeds. This is another Thai chicken. She's sitting on eggs. She is as mean as they come. The other chicken. Oh, be quiet, you. The other chicken has uh, eggs too. She's just out for out for a look around. I think they have three each or something. They keep fighting over them and breaking them and being chickens. There's the egg factory. They're not doing as good anymore. You get about uh, half an egg average per chicken per day. So I think there's 20 chickens here and we get 9 or 10 eggs a day. There's a couple of eggs. There's a mom. See if we can make this one scream. No? How many eggs you got in there? <laughs> I 
I'm the ones that get most of the questions or most of the comments. Where's the baby goat updates? Where's the goat updates? <laughs> There's the goats. Oh. It's always lunchtime here for goats. Hello, Mama. Hello, Mama. Want your nose rubbed? Huh? You want to bite me? Don't bite, don't bite. Eating and eating and eating and fighting. Beauty, why are you asleep under the box? I think she's making a nest. It's mom and her baby. We don't have no Billy now. We just have a whole bunch of girls. But we have too many goats for the area we have. A small space. There's seven in here now. Don't need to be making any babies anytime soon. Is it good? <laughs> As you can see, these guys are not uh, not going hungry. They live the life of luxury. All they got to do is cry, and somebody will come and give them more food. And all they need to be happy is food. Once the rice farms are done, they've started harvesting now, so another month the rice farms will be done. We'll take them outside, give them a good run in the farm. But with this many goats, and they running around crazy, that's <laughs> not easy. So once the rice is gone, so they're destroying rice. I'll take them down to the farm one morning and we we'll make a video of them running around and being crazy, jumping up and down. Why do you need to be in the box, huh? We started doing a form of the deep letter method, I guess, where we don't clean this uh, cage out all the time. We just pile all the uneaten, uh, mostly tree branches, and that end of the end of the pen. And it it works great during the rainy season. That was always dry. Goats ate getting wet. They won't uh, won't even walk on the ground if there's water on it if it's wet. Goats ate rain, so it's good for that, and it's been really good for their feet. I've noticed just climbing around and walking on the branches has been doing good at keeping their feet clean. Look at that, she's eating the bucket handle. Crazy goat, why well, you gotta eat plastic, huh? Is it good? You're not gonna share? So yeah, the deep letter method is really good. 
problem it got too high and they could almost get out <laughs> so we have a an endless supply of compostable material and this is under here you go down about oh, six inches not even you got soil already they walk on there and do all their business on top of it it's always wet underneath making compost Ducks, turkeys, and chickens all living together. Check out this box. Turkey toilet. Looks like it needs to be cleaned out. <laughs> what are you looking for, huh? What are you looking for? Look at that. Two headed turkey in a tire. I'm trying to teach the the new birds, the new laying uh, laying turkeys to put their eggs in the tire and then use it as a nest, you know. So then when I put them outside to sit on eggs for incubation, they're not scared of the tire. But in here they roost up on above it so we get a few droppings <laughs> and now one of these birds are broody I don't know which one they all look the same so it's a little difficult but one of these needs to go outside make me some babies and then in this little pen we have the littlest chicken ever this is limpy the only chicken I ever named, and only because she limps. This one's got a free pass because she's made very, very few eggs ever, maybe one a week. But she's uh, the nicest chicken I've ever had. You could pick her up anytime. Maybe not today, she's broody, no. She's sitting on duck eggs, six duck eggs. She's an old chicken, too. She's never gone broody before, so hopefully she'll stick it out. She's about halfway through, I think, at least two weeks. Duck eggs are uh, 35 days, five weeks. Well, you trying to make a make an egg for your sister to sit on, huh? Where's the fish with their new water? They're looking good, looking happy. Got about two more inches to go. I only fill this tank about halfway up. That seems to be way more than enough. And change the water every two to three days. After that, she gets a little smelly. There's a couple of those that are looking. Should almost take them out and measure them. Looking good size, maybe halfway there. Hopefully, I'll start putting some meat on them. <laughs> they don't get very big. Maximum size, maybe a foot. Can you see that? There's a fish trying to get up this green hose. <laughs> Here it goes. I just walked away from there. <laughs> It's really hard to point it out, but right in the center of the screen a few minutes ago, or a minute ago, there was one little tiny one. Pretty cool, huh? Maybe I need to do a better job of cleaning the bottom. Okay guys, well, that's it. An update on most everything. The fish, the garden, the birds, the goats, baby duck, mama was a mama turkey with a baby duck. We still have two rice farms, one the harvest is done, the one closest to here, the little farm. It's finished. 
we have fish in that lake and the big farm they just started the harvest it'll be a while a lot of it's not ready and there's a bunch of cows and lots going on